Exactly. Well, it's time to bring it on with some questions, Pat. This first one comes from Sarah, who says, I have come across many Christians stating that the third watch, which falls between midnight and 3 a.m., is a highly active time in the spiritual realm. I've been told that this time frame is when the devil wages spiritual warfare the most because the majority of us are sleeping and unable to pray. Is there any validity to this? Is it even biblical? None whatsoever. There are more superstitions. The Bible true? says the devil's like a roaring lion walking about seeking whom he can devour. And he doesn't slumber and he doesn't sleep and he's at it all 24 <laughs> hours a day. And um, the idea that this is a particular time of night, all this comes out of medieval superstition. There's so much of that accretion of superstition <clears throat> that we've picked up, and it doesn't have any biblical validity whatsoever that I'm aware of. All right. Mm -hmm. This is Roosevelt who says, if a drug dealer or a murderer wanted to give money to your ministry, would you receive it? Is it wrong to take money that's been earned through sinful activities? I, I think if a murderer came up and said, I just killed this guy and I extorted $20,000 from him and here it is, I think that should be turned over to the police and exactly. not accepted. I've heard ministers say, well, the devil's had it long enough, and why shouldn't it go to the work of the Lord? Uh, I, I don't think we need to inquire as to the source of money. Where did it come from? Uh, <clears throat> but the Bible talks about the hire of a dog. And the hire of a dog, a dog was a male prostitute, and uh, you didn't want to accept his wages into the temple. So anyhow, uh, I, it, it's your own conscience. These are to ask me what I would do. You, you don't, uh, mm -hmm. I, I think basically if you know the source and you know it was derived from It'll selling that. drugs mm -hmm. or something like that, you really would want to take that money. All right. This is Darla who says the book of Isaiah says that all the nations of the world will flow to the mountain of the Lord in the last days where holiness and righteousness are prevalent. But in chapter 57, Isaiah makes mention of another mountain, one replete with idolatry and wickedness. Are they the same mountain? Are they even literal mountains or is Isaiah using them as symbols of what's to come? Well, I think they're the symbols, but the idea of the mountain, Mount Zion was the mountain of the Lord and um, Zion, the holy city of God. And Jerusalem was built on a certain number of mountains, and Mount Zion uh, was became the symbol of heaven. And uh, so they'll flow to the mountain of the Lord, presumably you're talking about Jerusalem. But uh, uh, more than anything, it's, it's, it's a, a symbol of the heavenly kingdom, the mountain of the Lord is being on high, the, mm -hmm. the, the new Jerusalem. Yeah. Okay, this is Sharon who says, is smoking a sin? Uh, your body, if you're a Christian, is the temple of the Holy Spirit. And the Bible says if anybody destroys God's temple, God will destroy him. Uh, there was a time that uh, a guy like Spurgeon, for example, smoked a pipe. He didn't know there was anything wrong with smoking. Uh, we now know that nicotine destroys people's lungs, leads to Berger's disease, leads to high blood pressure and heart conditions, et cetera, and especially cancer. And um, is it wrong to smoke? Yes, absolutely it's wrong because it is committing suicide, and that's not a, a nice thing to do. Mm -hmm. This is Myra Pat who says, I've been praying for my son who has been diagnosed with ADHD, autism, and a seizure disorder. For the last several months, I have heard God say, bring him to me. What does that mean, and how do I do that? Well, you bring him to me consciously in prayer, like here. Mm -hmm. Here he is, God. I'm, I'm, I'm giving him to you. Honestly, I think the misdiagnosis of this H -H 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 ADHD, ADHD and ADD, I, I think it is a cop out. And these poor children, I mean, they're just active little kids, and and they want to run around and play. And you don't let them have play. You don't you, you don't open up the playground to them because it's too dangerous. Some lawyers said they can't go out and play, and so these little kids are locked up all day long. And then. Uh, in order to quiet them down, you shoot them full of drugs. I, I think Riddle and some of these things are iniquitous, absolutely iniquitous. You know, sometimes I think food dies too. Things in our food. Oh, absolutely. Red dye number three and all that stuff. Absolutely. And, and especially if they eat a lot of hot dogs and things, got those dyes in them. And nitrates and all that nitrates. stuff. Nitrates. Yeah. I mean, it's just you can go down the list of things in our foods that are. We used to, we did a thing about the so called excitotoxins. Yes. 
and they're there. The impact on the body. Yeah. And and you eat that stuff, and especially you go out to eat, and they've got uh, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, MSG, and all MSG kinds of particularly, things, yeah. Yeah, the other excitotoxins. Uh, of course, they get people hyper, but you don't give them drugs. You take them off the bad food and start giving them vegetables and fruit and, and fresh <laughs> air and exercise. Whew.